Welcome to the Smallscape. Today we are down in the basement in the gallery. We have completed the third tank in the gallery and that's the 125, 125 gallon bad boy over there. And Mr. Primetime has aquascaped that one as well. He's technically hardscaped it. And then I am gonna bring you along so that we can plant it up. So I'm gonna go through very thoroughly. I've had many requests to to do this type of video, but I'm gonna go through how I chose the plants, how I'm going to place them, like where I'm gonna put them, and then also how I'm gonna plant them and or uh, attach them. Hope you enjoy. Here's the 125, all hardscape by Mr. Primetime. He did a great job. I love this spider wood, especially that piece. River rock and red flint sand. That is the tank and it was loosely loosely inspired by Jen Williams tank from Daytona Beach this year where it's just driftwood focused and the, the plants are all very kind of small uh, kind of incorporating layers what I kind of call layers a small planting layer uh, not a whole lot of rock work uh, and then primarily driftwood this is a uh, one of my favorites this is crypt red wenty a whole bunch of them and I would like to plant up basically the center so all those little areas in the center of the tank hopefully there's enough room that I left uh, allowing for it because when you're choosing your plants you want to know are you planting into the substrate if so you need to have spaces you need to know where you're gonna be planting it or are you going to be attaching I'm actually doing both so a lot of those crypts are going to be in the center and then eventually they will fill in very nicely looking forward to that but they are a little on the small side right now but that's that's totally okay i kind of enjoy watching escape totally evolve and not just being done from the start it's kind of cool i love that little area right there it just it reminds me of of like tatooine i don't know is it just me it looks like a little like tree trunk growing out of there so i don't want to plant it really heavily but I am gonna put a couple of crypts in there. Now, frequently with crypts, I do not use the planting tweezers. I really don't because they're very, those little roots right there where the roots and then the stems meet, the stems can be very, very fragile. And I just, uh, I, don't, I don't do really well. Plus a lot of the crypts, if they've been kind of floating around, they kind of have a little bit of a bend. And I just, I prefer to just use my hand to kind of weasel it in in between all those little areas, especially with all this driftwood. Kind of challenging uh, for some of these. But for any scape, I prefer to have not more than three different types of plants. For me, it just keeps it more simple and kind of easy to picture in my head. I really love crypts for pretty much any scape. Uh, I never used to, right when I first started, I didn't really care much for them, but these, this is Mr. Primetime's favorite plant, so you will very rarely see him do any kind of uh, any kind of scape or scape request without crypts in it. And as they fill in, they're gonna look so beautiful. Along the back, I think we're going to, to put in just a few crypt spiralis and see how they do. They've not historically done too well for me, but we're gonna try them out, they're really fun. They fill in really, really well. Uh, at some point in the future, we have some maybe corkscrew valve. It's Crypt Spiralis. Crypt Spiralis, sorry. It's hard to see on the camera, but that's what's going in there. And we're making progress. These are going just along the back. And we'll see, we'll, again, I just want them to kind of like be peeking out through the, the back of the driftwood. We'll see how they do, but uh, I did use a I did use the tweezers here because they're just, it's too far down. I'm even on a step stool, but I, there was no way I could, I could reach. I just love that little area. I just, I don't know if, if I'm the only one, but I love looking down in escape and I wanna make sure that stays clear. Cause I don't know, I just think it's a cool looking little area. This is a 
a crypt, I don't remember the name. It looks like a sword to me, but it was a crypt. And I can't remember what kind it was, but Mr. Primetime absolutely had to have it. We have one. So I figure I'm gonna plant it behind that really unique piece of spider wood. Kind of keep it, the, the single, the single loner plant kind of behind there so it doesn't really distract from the kind of focal point. I kind of find that guy to be a nice little focal point since it's such a cool piece of driftwood. But I think I'm just gonna put it right back here. Here are a bunch of just random uh, crypts, all different types that we got from other tanks that we've broken down. And it was kind of nice to go through these. And all I did was I kind of, I combined usually two or three of them. So instead of just planting them all individually, I wanted like more m masses of them scattered throughout the tank. And this should really be fun to watch them kind of grow in with slightly different textures and even colors, because I'm sure in here we've got reds, bronze, greens, all different colors, but a little tricky getting them pulled apart because all I did was basically chuck them in another tank. And um, and then you can also kind of cut the, the roots a little bit, shorten them if they're too long. They do get a little tricky to get under the, the substrate because it is kind of, those are long roots. So, they, they don't mind having their roots trimmed a little bit, and then I'll kind of generate some new growth too. It's always fun using a step stool to get into the tank. I usually don't have to deal with that with my tiny little tanks, but this was, oh, I was so looking forward to this. This is my massive collection of little Anubias. I ha I'm not using that one, yuck. He's weird looking. He goes in another tank. All I have here is a bunch, probably at least I think maybe 12 to 15 Anubius Nana Petite and they're so adorable. They all look so nice. And then I've got just a few, maybe like four or six, something like that. This one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six Anubius Golden with that nice lighter color. I have plans for that one, but look at how pretty they are. I just love Anubius. Although, you know, it's my favorite aquatic plant. And those I'm going to be attaching with super glue, super glue gel and I will be attaching them in all those little areas where driftwood, see right there, you, you can maybe spot some little spots where you see some sand, where I kind of try to dis disguise the super glue, where I attached the driftwood to the rock work so that the driftwood does not float. And those will kind of cover those little areas up and just look more natural where they're just kind of poking up in between things that meet and all along the bottom. Uh, I know there's some scapes that can work out pretty well when you kind of have the Anubius or other plants going along the driftwood. I don't generally do that because I, I just don't have the skills for that and it just winds up looking messy to me. So I just basically want a layer of plants. So these guys are all kind of on the same level and just it was kind of fun. First I place them to see, make sure that it, I don't run out and I have them all on like one side of the tank or something, but make sure they're all evenly spread out. And then I go back in and it's time to glue. Oh wait, no, it's not time to glue yet because I, I still have the Anubius Golden. And my idea, since that is a lighter, brighter color, I wanted to leave that to the end because I don't want it to look distracting or busy. But if you notice, in the tank, there are a couple of places where the rocks are a little lighter and where the lighting in the aquarium, just because of the center braces, the lighting is hitting in a couple of spots in the tank where it makes it brighter behind that cool piece of spider wood on the right. And then towards the left, uh, there it's just very, it, the, the spider wood even looks a lot brighter. So that's where I kind of wanted to center it so that the Anubius Golden also looks like a it kind of increases that lightness. And I decided, you know what, I, I need some back there. So I think I'm gonna have to take some from the other side and put some so it's kind of peeking out back there. Can't wait to see these Anubias kind of grow in and make more. Now it's time to attach. And what I usually do is I, piece by piece, I go in and I see, 
All right, is that kind of, I, I prefer to have a mechanical hold. So that means if you let go of the piece of whatever plant you're attaching, if you let go, it's naturally just gonna sit there. So I find the, the little spots where it's actually touching the rock if I were to just leave it alone. And I make sure the angle that I'm holding it is the angle I'm gonna put it back in. And then I just leave it. This is a great tool to use. It's an accelerator spray. I know you can spray it first. I usually spray it afterwards and it just increases the um, dry time and it'll dry in a jiffy. You always want to use super glue gel just because it's thicker and you don't want it running down onto your hands and into the water. It, it's completely fish safe once it dries. It's aquarium safe. It's all that fun stuff but uh, it makes your life a whole lot easier. And I can't imagine like tying with string or anything that would just take too much time. All I do is kind of place it and then I hold it and make sure that I know exactly which points are there roots that are touching is it a part of the rhizome maybe even a leaf that happens to be touching uh, a drift driftwood or a rock and then I just place it the other way I possibly will do it like here is I actually place the Anubias and then bring the super glue to it sometimes that's easier especially if you can reach it It does take, take some time and there will be times where you glue it and you hold it down and it just, it, it won't stick uh, for whatever reason. Usually what I try to do in that case is either just try it again, put another blob, or just maybe pick a different spot if it's just not working out. Don't get, no, try not to get frustrated. I, I get very frustrated very easily with doing this. And then don't forget to to get a uh, spray bottle of water and keep it handy so you can keep your plants moist during this entire process, especially if it's taking a long time like it does for me. And um, if somebody took my spray bottle, so I improvised. Here's the tank all planted. I really like how it turned out. I especially love this, these rocks and the smaller scatter stones and, and everything kind of blended nicely. Love the color scheme. And of course the Anubias is my favorite part. I just love Anubias and especially since we had so many of them, love it. The more the merrier and everybody's behaving and attaching very nicely. Don't be surprised if some of them will like float off or maybe even some of your fish if you've got plecos. Oh, they're notorious for knocking off plants and dislodging stuff. Don't get frustrated, just, you know, find it and reattach it or you can even wedge it. I love to do that as well. Mr. Primetime's always concerned when I do that because sometimes they don't stick. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was so much fun. Glad it is done. And I look forward to seeing you next time.